I'm Jordan Weeks. I'm Chris Oglesby. We are South Austin Brewing Company, and this is Beer, Beer Diaries. Rolling fast down I 35. Hey folks, this is Greg Zestrick from The Beer Diaries. Today I'm at South Austin Brewing, here with Jordan Weeks, the brewmaster, Chris Oglesby, the director of promotion events. We're here to talk about Belgian beers brewed with love here in South Austin, and I'm holding a delightful goblet of love in my hand, as you guys are as well. Salud. Salud. Cheers. So, thanks for having us. It's great for you to invite us in to talk with you. It's a great honor. You guys have been doing awesome beers. It's nice to chat. The honor is ours. We're very happy to be here. How long have you guys been running for? How long has it been going? So we started brewing in December. We've been selling since February, and uh, the bottles for about six more months after that. So we're one of the newest breweries in Austin. And which is, for me, kind of boggles my mind a little bit. It seems like you guys have been around, a, like in a sense, forever. Uh, not, not, but you know, I've been here for five years. But I just remember you, you guys have had a big impact since you've been on the market. Like, when we started up, we were building our brand really hard ourselves, doing self-distribution, not a carrier's license. Um, but since then, we've signed on with Keg One. Yeah. It's a fantastic distributor, and they've been really working hard to put our beer out in the market, put it in pubs, and in all the liquor stores and grocery stores. There's a little bit of a story about the design of your logo as well. You guys kind of like tried to capture that cool South Austin vibe. Yeah, so as you can see, we rock so hard we break strings. <laughs> ah, because there's hops on the end of them, hop, hop cones. But there's a lot going on with those logos. There's also a pint glass, ah. and yes, hops, and steam, and aroma. And kind of a barley thing at the top. That's that's right. really, and I saw it's funny because you guys have wonderful lavatories because they actually have some of the they have some of the design ideation stuff on the walls like it's sort of South Austin right. themed stuff. They did a brand like uh, identity kind of exactly to find out what's different about Austin. I mean, in our opinion, since the beginning of the business plan, the coolest thing about the South is Austin, and the coolest thing about Austin is South Austin. Yeah, no, yeah. that's uh, I think that's. A lot of people would agree with you there. And music has a lot to do with that, which is why Chris is on uh, staff, because he runs all the events, he puts all the music in here. I mean, we're a very music and art yeah. heavy brewery. And, you, and I mean, you have this thing, you have Groovy Sunday, is it almost every Sunday, or how, how Yeah, most is Sundays we have an event called Groovy Sundays, in which we have Austin, local Austin music. Uh, we'll try to have a uh, local Austin food here, local beer. Uh, really, that's what we're about, is, yeah. is uh, you know, you can look around a place that's within where you live and there's going to be some really great stuff. And what we're trying to do is make really high quality, some of the best beer that you can get in the world right here for people in Austin, Texas. Uh, and so we do the same thing with the music where we'll have people come in here and see really great live music that you can see here in Austin in the brewery uh, so they can taste the beer. And it's too. mostly original music. I mean, these are mainstays of Texas. Yeah, yeah. And talking about, like, I mean, back to the, the fact you're making, in a sense, Belgium's local, the freshness is right. greater. So we'll That's talk our a little key, about that. exactly. So in Belgium, there are hundreds of breweries, and you can get their beer from that little village only in that area. Um, and we want to be like that here in Austin. We want to have fresh Belgian beer available. By the time you get really great beers like Duvel and Chimay and West Mala, it's been in a container from right, right. Belgium, so it's not necessarily fresh when it gets here. It doesn't mm -hmm. taste like it does at the brewery mm -hmm. or in the village where you can get do, it. Do you think the bottle condition stuff does? Is that is that possible or still just that? A that little bit more, but you never know if it's, it's been alive, refrigerated. Right? Yes, exactly. Oh, right, right. It has changed and you really got to treat it mm -hmm. with care mm -hmm. in order to get it thousands of miles right. Safely. away from its original destination. So we want to be a locally sourced, fresh Belgian brewery. And you guys are on kegs and also the bombers. I think you have a bomber down Correct. there. Correct. We're 750 oh. milliliter wire corks. So they're wire cork, just like Chimay or Duvel. Um, we bottle condition our beer in the bottles. The kegs are artificially carbonated, so they're ready immediately in the pubs. But we add a little bit of sugar to each one of the bottles, just like home brewing. Right. 
And, uh, well, and there's the yeast that still keeps going in there, too. It's alive, right. So you got to keep it cold. And, I mean, there's a difference between live, fresh beer and beer that's dead. It's been filtered or ultra-pasteurized. Right. This has a really creamy, uh, light, uh, the the bubbles are very uh, small and effervescent, subtle, almost like a champagne. Well, and I think it's interesting because I, I actually have one off. I have a, the saison off the keg, and and yours, this, it's it's off still, still it's yeah. just still so much more <laughs> yeah. frothy and smooth. I mean, the flavors, the fruit really comes out in a fresh, bodily conditioned ale, unlike right. any other kind right, of beer. Right, right. Oh, that's really cool. And so as far as uh, brewing goes, um, we'll get, we'll kind of, each of you guys have interesting backgrounds, I know, and so I'll maybe start with you, Jordan, in terms of, um, you actually were a brewer way back in the day, obviously, and then you took a sojourn into the tech side of things and Correct. came back to brewing. <laughs> maybe, can you talk a little about the, the good old days and how, what that was like? So in the 90s, I, I was working at Hill Country Brewing and Bottling Company. They did Balcones Fault Beers. It was a mainstay in Austin. Um, and then I worked at Austin Homebrew Supply for two different owners for about four five years, I built their website, and then got into the tech side of the world and got a little bit burnt out of it. My kids grew up, and they're a little bit older now, so I can afford to be poor and follow my <laughs> and, dream. And do what you love. Right, right. follow my dream. Well, hopefully exactly. that is, hopefully it actually, it's lucrative as well at <laughs> yeah. some point. But That's I've been friends with all the, I mean, forward. the older brewers here in town, like, uh, not older, but the, the more guys established. Doing it for a while, yeah. Exactly. Um, the guys from Real Ale and St. Arnold and Independence, and Live Oak. I mean, these guys I've known for 15 years. Yeah, yeah. So I've been here in this brewing community for a long time. Right. It's an honor to be part of it now. That's great. How, how's it changed? Like, I mean, I think we talked to some of the guys, and that some of the guys that were there in the beginning said it was a real rough slogging in those 90s because people, you know, the whole craft beer thing was just too much for people to handle. Like, it just was. Like, well, also, there weren't people here enough. You know, there yeah. weren't the educated craft brewing community that we have now in Austin. Right. There's over a thousand people who move here to Austin a month now. In the 90s, we were a sleepy little college town, a right. government town. Um, now they're pretty affluent, they're informed, they want to try new stuff. They've traveled the world, they've yeah. gone to Portland and Denver and the East Coast, and they expect good beer yeah. in their community. Well, it's cool because some of the really nice restaurants, Barley Swine and those, have spectacular beer lists to go right. with their food, and they'll even make recommendations on course matching and that sort of thing. It's and very locally, so like yeah. they're, yeah, they're yeah, focusing yeah, on the local. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. one of the, yeah, we, we're pleased to be associated with Barley Swine because that's one of the things that they believe in is, yeah. is local fresh. Goodness. And once again, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to make world quality beer here for people in Central Texas. Yeah, yeah. For you to enjoy here. and. Uh, and if people want to drink it, they need to come here to Central Texas. How far, how far afield is, is the beer getting right now? Are you guys can keep it like fairly local? Are you intend to, or you'll see how it well, goes? Austin is uniquely positioned because it has the I-35 and the I-10 corridor. So yeah. that's Dallas to Austin to San Antonio and then Houston, which are the kind of fastest it. growing metropolises in America. Yeah. So we really don't have to go anywhere outside of Austin. There's lots of, lots of growth room. To grow. Right. Houston's about as far away as we would even need to be, and we want to have that freshness there. So. Yeah. Yeah. We don't mind the fact that people have to travel here to come to drink yeah, our beer. Yeah. I remember Texas is bigger than France, so even if we don't <laughs> go outside of Texas, that's an awful big territory. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of and there's a lot of people, as you know. And there's and I think I think it's interesting because in those bigger centers, there's not as much craft beer drunk yet. Like Austin, I think the mm -hmm. percentage is people think is, is maybe greater than 10, 10 to 15. Yeah. Texas is an average five or under, so there's just. The law number says that there's well, a lot of non-craft being drunk. Well, two Saturdays ago was the Texas Craft Brewers Festival. Yeah. The year before, there were about 13 or 14 Texas breweries that were there. This year, there were about 30. So we've doubled Which in is, one year. Yeah. There's a lot of new startups, aren't there? Right. And that's not including brew pubs. That's just craft breweries yeah. like ours. Yeah. It's a great time to be starting a craft brewery in Texas yeah. because uh, people are starting to look at Texas as uh, the hub in the south for craft brewing. Um, yeah, and the Austin area um, is, as he said before, the, the hub of the, the South for as far yeah. as brewing. Yeah. So transitioning, I mean, you have an interesting background. I remember we chatted before mm -hmm. in the past, and I was, it's like, like me, you're a refugee from a, a, what I'd call the professional career. I was a former doctor. The cube doctor. world. Yeah. You're, 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 uh, you were a lawyer. And can we talk a little bit about that transition uh, for you and, and what, what you I am that? a lawyer. I, I, also, I always say you aren't, but yes. you still are. You remain a lawyer. And the people ask me what kind of lawyer I'm, and I say that I'm the fun kind. So, uh, but <laughs> you, look, I, you look like the fun kind. I've you don't look like the written a, a book uh, called Fire in the Water, Earth in the Air about Texas musicians, and I've written a number of articles for magazines about musicians, um, and I've also produced a number of shows. And so when we first started opening the brewery, we wanted to make 
great Austin beer and make this a place where people will come from out of town to look and see, hey, this is a this is an Austin experience. And so Jordan asked me to come work here with right, him right. to help kind of bring in some of that local flavor. Because yeah. once again, that's what we're all about is local, local, local. Get as close as you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to your neighborhood, your community. There's great music here, great food here, here yeah. great beer here. Yeah. Um, and that's what I, my, my passion has always been about is promoting that local feel. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I was writing about music, it's always been about local music. Right. Uh, look right down the street. There's Probably somebody who's a great guitar player. Well, especially player. especially down yeah. here, you know. And I think I think I think you were it was West Texas was was uh, a lot of the focus of what you your right. music originally. And what was what uh, what are some of the people you, you spoke to that what are folks that would we know out there? Oh uh, well, I mean for, I mean uh, as far as it's local big, Austin people, yeah. I mean Joe Ely, Angela Straley, uh, Bobby Keys from the Rolling Stones, uh, uh, the Mains family, Natalie Mains, yeah. Lloyd Mains, people like that. Gilmore, um, the Gilmore family, Jimmy Gilmore. So. A lot of these people from West Texas are have been the people have been identified in Austin as Austin music. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, they kind of and I've it. just through my writing have gotten to know a lot of these people. So we've been trying to bring that together, bring in the cognitive dissonance of really high quality uh, European style beer with yes. you know funky South Austin. Uh, <laughs> that's a crazy blues, rhythm and blues yeah. country yeah, music yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's really what we want is people. I want to be the next generation of the armadilla and thread gills and you know this the cosmic cowboy feel of Austin which built Austin. Right, right. It makes it unique. That stand and we want to revive sure. that kind of thing. Yeah, and that once again it's you know we don't care about being a worldwide beer. We want people to come here and associate right. our beer with this about part Austin. of the country. And especially unique about South Austin. Yes, no, for, without a note. Having been spent some time down here, it is someplace pretty special for sure. But that's really well put. It's, it's cognitive dissonance. Because <laughs> we are doing a very unique and esoteric and uh, niche style of beer mm -hmm. here in Austin. Where do you import the in ingredients from? Are, you, are they We European? get all of our ingredients from Belgium. I mean, so it's we like use the highest quality ingredients we can possibly find. So it's Belgian pills. Uh, for the golden, that's the only really, thing on the grain bill. Wow! And then the saison has wheat and a little Munich and a little Vienna and some dextrin malt. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Austin tap water. And Austin <laughs> tap water, which is the best brewing water in the South, maybe some of well, the best in America. I, I remember, I remember hearing um, the story of Pierre Sellis, who had right. Sellis. That's why he, he scoured America, trying to find the best place to right. brew his hoe garden, right. and settled in Austin because we have the karst topography, we have the limestone, we have right, the perfect. Right. Um, I mean, we have the calcium Perfect that we need, everything that we need for brewing beer, mm -hmm. most efficiently, is here in Austin. So touching back on the point you made earlier about just how the explosive growth has gone here in Austin, what's, what's, what's the scene among the brewers? I mean, you have, I mean, generally it seems you guys are so collegial and, and, and it, kind of arm in arm together. It's really, it's really, really cool to see. You don't see that a lot of times. Well, I quote Sam Calgioni from Dogfish Head. He says that brewing industry is fairly asshole proof. <laughs> It's also there's also a real interesting generosity in it. Like you know, honestly, like it's there's two things the way I, two things I think about. One is the generosity because you're like, hey, come in, have a beer, let's 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 share. And right. So it's, you're kind of exporting that kind of like I'm not I'm not joking. When I say it's brewed with love. Right. Um, it, 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 it really is. We don't feel like we're competing with any of the other breweries. Yeah. Uh, they're all making great beer, and we're making great beer. We want people to room. realize that Austin is a place where people care about the craft and care about what they're doing. Um, and we love it that there's other people yeah. that are doing exceptional work here. I mean, here. craft beer drinkers, when they go to a bar, they don't drink your brand, and that's it. They'll drink yours yeah, and yours and yours and yours and yours. Yeah, yeah. They'll drink it all. Yeah. I drink it all. Yeah. I mean, really, we're co-conspirators against the man, which is AB well, InBev, I, not even an American well, company anymore, and <laughs> of course. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing about that is, is just on the demographics. There's, there's lots, of, lots of room to claw into general beer drinking. I mean, mm -hmm. craft has a, like, it, it seems to go up about a percent a year on a low national scale. Three percent, and craft beer actually grows 14 percent in sales. Ah, yeah, but in terms annually. of, that's a percentage of the overall, it's still kind of like, it's, yeah, it's going to start going like a couple, yeah, a few percent, but it's not, it's, it's, and there's the lots of room. And big breweries fall at three yeah, percent. So we are the only growing uh, demographic right. of, in the, in the industry, of right. beer brewing industry. So what about um, you know back in the olden days? Like what what was that like? I mean I don't mean to pre-prohibition. No, olden days You're like old... Sumerians. Well, there's that. <laughs> well, talking, okay, Sumer... we're not doing anything differently than it's the funny. Sumerians were doing, except we use stainless steel and glycol and steam. Yeah, and actually that's from Brad Farbstein. 
He was the one who told me that. It well, was it's absolutely true. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I mean, there's lots of olden days. Some of it was also like in the in the you know, in England in the in the 1700s. Every house had a, if they were an affluent family, had a chef mm -hmm. who doubled as the brewer. Uh, and even not affluent families, the women made brewed. the beer. They made the bread. They also brewed the beer. Yeah. They're making beer in the White House now. They're making. We the actually White drank House. some clone of that the other day. At the Whippin. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, had, we had that. It's it pretty it was cool. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, it's, yeah, it's tasty beer for sure. Mm -hmm. So as far as as far as um, what you see for the Austin scene, like how do you imagine that unfolding? Like looking looking out as far as the well, I mean, where, where you think things are going to go. Portland over. has 50 breweries just in the Portland city limits. Right. Well. I think it's so 60. if we grow to, and we're just, there's no way we're gonna grow that fast. Famous last be. words. <laughs> you never yeah. know. But it, we can hold another 20. Yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing I think in corollary with all of it as well, there's a lot of brew pubs and other places starting mm -hmm. up. There's a lot of. Really it's not just manufacturing mm -hmm. companies. It's also brew pubs. Yeah. Uh, that's a brewery. Um, what about uh, one of the, one of the things we talk to folks about is just to understand and learn a little bit about some of the Texas laws and some of the uniqueness. Of those, um, and you know, if you could change something about them, what would you change to make your business easier to easier to run or faster growth or what would so the, it be? So the laws really haven't changed since prohibition was repealed, um, and they haven't really caught up. The wine industry got smart and yeah, they lobbied hard and fast very early. And they won. They? So now you can ago. buy right. Yeah. You can buy wine at a winery in Texas. You cannot buy beer at a brewery. So right. we're just really looking for a level playing field where you mm -hmm. can go to a brewery and. Buy beer. Yeah, it's, and if you could, like, for example, if in, I think you know as well, you could have, you need more people. You'd cause, you'd create employment. I would have to hire. If I was selling beer at this, brewery, I would have to hire <laughs> ten people immediately. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's good. And pay a lot more taxes. I pay my taxes, and I have no right. problem with that. I mean, it's a huge growth right. opportunity mm. for Texas. One, one uh, kind of random question I always ask folks, because I think you guys have a probably special affinity to it, is what do you brew to? What kind of music is, is going on here in the... We do a lot of Chris's mix. The Chris mix? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, a lot of it's Texas music. And we it's have Texas a, a music. Lot of Alejandro Escoveda, ZZ Top, uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard. Rock and roll. Uh, yeah. Uh, a little heavy metal. Texas rock and blues. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah would, I think a lot of breweries really work with a heavy metal. Yeah, they're, they're, they're we're we're less heavy metal. metal. Uh, uh, I dig it. I just southern blues yeah. maybe. So if, yeah. you, if you pick it, what do you like? If you get, if you can. Well, pick I like Ani DeFranco and. Uh, he likes chick music. <laughs> oh. Patty Griffin. <laughs> Patty Griffin, absolutely. That's all right. Uh, but I really want to know. What I really, really want to know is if I can have some beer out of that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to try it. No, I have I have had it out of the bottle before, but it's been a little while. So that's yeah, it's thinking. good in the bottles because oh, our yeah. bottle condition. Well, it's good everywhere. Bottle condition is tastes different than keg beer. Yeah, no, definitely. Beer. Like you said, it's a living living product for sure. And it metabolizes differently. I mean, the fruits really pop. Um, the freshness really comes out. Yeah, it just like it's got a brightness to it. I think right. is the way way I would almost describe it. So, um, you know, in terms of in terms of going forward, do you think? Uh, the, the bottles themselves. I mean, you obviously going to plant some other formulas. Like, I mean, you have ideas. I mean, so I think we. Well, there's something here going on here. This is a little homebrew. Home so the thing. next recipe is going to be a uh, Belgian strong. That's the traditional right. uh, style, but it will be ruby red, garnet red, and about 12 percent alcohol. Wow. Mm -hmm. So above the quadrupel level. Right. And that'll be for the holidays. I also want to do another light beer like this, yeah. like a Belgian style lager. We can do lagers in our fermenters. So I want a nice, clean, easy drinking. Well, look at Belgian style. Oh, that's interesting. Lake kind of beer. Well, it, that's the thing. So, I mean, these beers, both of them, like I, I had the Saison before, I moved over to the Golden ALM. They're, they're really tuned to the weather locally. Like, mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's one thing that. By design. Much, Thank yeah. you for noticing well, that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Golden Ale is a really great Austin beer, and the Saison is too for the hot weather, uh, the yeah. spicy food. Um, yeah. Well, I think it's interesting because I, th I think, you know, almost everyone we talk to has had that orientation. Like, not that people, like, some people do it, and it's not, but it's not like a first thing they do. A lot of other folks do definitely. Um, make heavier beers, but many, like most of them also, almost everyone makes some kind of lighter beer to sort of reflect the fact that it gets kind of hot here in Texas. Sure. It's, it's, it's a little hot today, it's only I think 90 outside. So. I drank real ale beers for uh, over a decade, and then they came out with Fireman's Number 4, and that's my go-to now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I drink everything that they brew, but I have a six-pack of 
Yeah, what are your favorite yeah. locals? Like, is that is that one of your favorite I like, locals? Li yes, and I like uh, Live, Live Oaks Oak. beers. Oh my God, they are just amazing. Chip McElroy's. They, they, they have a they have a certain. I mean, there's an elegance and delicious like to them that. Really, like, I was Devil's Backbone, which is a big time. Belgian yeah, that's style really tasty. Beer, which yep. is really one of my favorites. And Brian, anything at Brian Peters brews, I'll drink. Well, he got a gold medal at GABF. Right. For <laughs> salute. Um, <laughs> was it Hellas? Was that was for Hellas? his? Yeah, it was a Keller. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's 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 a great honor. I mean, that thing, Austin actually did pretty well. There's a number of, I mean, Real got a couple silvers as well. Mm -hmm. So it was actually Austin, good. Texas cleans up at the yeah. GABF. We do, because these brewers are really focused. Right. They know what they're doing. So as far as the beers themselves, we can talk a little bit about, uh, you know, like we get a little specific on them. Uh, like I said, I had the I had the saison before, so going a bit from memory, um, and we talked a little bit before we were we were, we were filming. Um, it's a really, really, you know, interesting saison that it pushes the limits to the end of the saison scale. There's um, an arc on saison. I mean, saison in French just means seasonal. Yeah. So you can have very light, light colored, light alcohol, light body mm -hmm. saisons. You can also have the heavier side of it, and we yeah. definitely push it Sour. to the end of that. Yeah, the tartness. Yeah, it, it was tar it's tart, and I think again it had the, the pepperiness to it as well, nice and earthy. Um, I thought that I thought that the uh, the mouthfeel was really nice. It's a very very nice kind of balanced mouthfeel, very quite light. Thank you. Um, That's and, then, and then the the, the carbonation was kind of, is interesting because some saisons, as you said, can be really effervescent. Right. Mm -hmm. um, your, yours is actually on the it's low, softer, lower side. Yeah, it's softer. And we sure. balance the hops so that it is on the sweeter side. So it's it's sugar malt sugar forward. Yeah. Um, and the cracked pepper from the saison yeast we use. But it finishes nice and dry. Yeah. Like I think mm -hmm. that's the, again the magic of the Belgian yeast is, is that was by design. Yeah, it took I, a long time to make that. <laughs> well, no, and, and it's interesting. And this one, this one is interesting. Cause I think it's, it's, it's maybe a touch richer in a way. Like I, like I said, I got we were talking earlier. I, you know, the I just, golden. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's it's again light, but I got like you know more fruit. I got pear and orange off the nose, and and then again it's 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 the the the, the body. Again, it finishes super dry. It's kind of it got a nice middle to it though, and then and it changes as it warms up too. Yeah, I so mean, you when sit you on it for a while. Open that bottle at mm -hmm. 50 degrees when you pull it out of your fridge. It has a completely different flavor profile from 20, 30 minutes later, or when you're holding it in your hand. Mm -hmm. Now the fruit and the overripe plum yeah. and tangerine really start to come into and their there's, own. And there's a bit of creaminess to it as well. Like it's it's got a got a really Really neat, sort of uh, like I said, the mouth feels interesting because again, the carbonation is on the lower side for this. Right, it's, it's not. It's not like, and it's, I think some of the goldens, like I mean, Duvel and those guys, they they can be like three volumes of yeah. CO2, and we do it at about two. Yeah, they can be really, really fluffy and. And CO2 has a flavor too. I mean, yeah. it's that fresh cracked black pepper. Yeah, yeah. That you can get on it. Oh no, for sure. So it's hard to balance that, and especially when you're doing it naturally carbonated, because the yeast goes at its own speed. I can measure to the nanometer the carbonation level of a keg because right. I'm injecting CO2 into right, it. Right, right. But when you put it up in the cold room, just from adding a little bit of sugar, the yeast is on its own. You really have no control over it. it just, so yeah, we're it's, popping it's, it's corks, sort of, you know, after the last seven days, eight days, and hope that it's gotten to the point where it's yeah. right. When you guys, because you guys, are you guys still hand corking? I remember we you had the glory yeah. bottle, we hand cork, we hand wire muselet. Wow. Every Case bottle pack. of these, of this beer, we put the label on, we yeah. put the right. cork I think on. I think I went out two or three guys at one time, and I remember you said, I think you also had like volunteers come in and help you guys out. We need about seven or eight oh, yeah. people at a time to do, that's the heaviest uh So you find the, fan, the, the big fan, yeah. fans of the beer? And oh, there's always people that say, well, I want to come in and volunteer and help out, and that's always the day we ask them to come in. So His events yeah, are good yeah, for that, yeah. too. So <laughs> when people are watching there's the there's band, a, like, oh, a, I love this place. Can I volunteer to do is, something? Is there a, like, you need, uh, to, you need yes, like, a, like you one can. of those, uh, you need the, the um, Uncle Sam, like, I need you with your picture right. on it. So like, nice. say, I more of a Tom Sawyer kind of thing, where it's like, oh, isn't this very fun? You want to come in and build some character? Help me do this job. Yeah. Bring me an apple or a pocket knife and I'll let you help me <laughs> do this that's, work. That's hilarious. Uh, no, it's fun. It really is fun and it's a, it's a good time for people to But get it's hard work. I mean, we make a hundred cases at a time. It's that community thing, yeah. We're, we're making beer for our people. Mm -hmm. That's the way they do it in Belgium. Yeah. They do it Yeah, and, and it kind of creates that, that sort of bond with the mm -hmm. people in the community. One question I had for you, I'm kind of jumping around slightly on this, but I thought it'd be interesting before we close because we're kind of coming towards the end. But actually, before I do that, Declaring a favorite, so I always declare my favorite. And I think I think my favorite is the saison, but mm -hmm. damn, this one is awfully <laughs> close because you know the fruit is trying to hit me. And I'm, I'm, so I, I think my favorite's the saison, but I like this is a delicious. The golden mm -hmm. is delicious as well. Salute. Uh, so you know, it, 
that's uh, they're both great beers, and I'm, I'm very excited to hear about this new one and try this new one you've got. It's that's going to be really exciting. Sorry, Chris, back to you. The question: um, What was the most interesting interview in your book? Because I know you interviewed a lot of folks, and who who did you talk to that was you really really set your world on fire? Uh, well, Bobby Keys, who is a Rolling Stones player, uh, saxophone player, was pretty phenomenal to talk to, and to think Imagine. that that's actually a guy that grew up pretty close to where. I grew up. Yeah, I thought that was pretty spectacular. Um, also, Angela Straley, who is kind of one of the first ladies of Texas blues, mm -hmm. um, she was a really intelligent, cool lady to talk to too. Oh, so. and he's friends yeah. with a lot of these people. I mean, he's yeah. friends with Joe Ely and. Uh, Does he drink uh, so fast? And yeah, well, I mean, and, and that's what we're trying to do is trying to to make this Taste a place makers, to where yeah. when you come to Austin, you're going to get the. High quality, high quality music, high quality art, high quality beer, high quality food. Yeah. In uh, a cool South Austin way, and cut offs and a cowboy hat. I mean, you know. Yeah, you it's, it's, to, it's, it's, it's <laughs> the pretense. You don't have to gone. live in New York City or yeah. Tokyo or Paris to to have the best stuff in the world. The Some highest of the best quality. stuff in the world yeah, can yeah, be right here. Very, very, very Which resolves that Central conflict Texas. of yeah. that cognitive dissonance. And that's the what we're trying to do. Qualities can be right here in right. your, like blocks from your house. While you're wearing boots and jeans. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we that's want. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, so that's, I mean, that's most of uh, what I got. I mean, this, 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 in a sense, flew by, but I think we've been actually doing this for a little while. It's been pretty amazing. Um, I can't think of anything else, but, you know, I want to say thank you and cheers. It was an honor. Salud. Yeah. We love it. Prost, we really, cheers. Nazdrovia, all those things. <laughs> and uh, I think we'll, we'll try that one. Ah, uh, the fruit. Thank you.